Uh, welcome to a new edition of Skill TV. I'm Joel Leonard. Uh, they call me the maintenance evangelist. And I'm here today uh, uh, to showcase some of the new technologies that are being implemented to revolutionize uh, energy efficiency, uh, business performance, and productivity. Uh, today we happen to have one of the foremost leaders in infrared thermography in the name of uh, Greg Stockton of Stockton Infrared. Uh, Greg, welcome. Thank you, Joel. Uh, Greg, what is infrared thermography? Infrared thermography is the viewing of the world in infrared wavelengths. What's an infrared wavelength? Well, 400 to 700 nanometers is what we're looking at here with these TV cameras. Okay. Infrared is infra meaning below. Infrared is wavelengths below visible light. Okay. And the, you can actually capture that with a camera now? Certainly. You, it's been done since the late 60s, actually. And the cameras improve in miniaturization over the years. Okay. The, the, the first cameras were huge, huge cameras. I have some pictures of them, actually. And I understand, as they say, uh, uh, you give a kid a hammer, uh, everything's a nail. Uh, you got introduced to the infrared back in the uh, mid-80s, right? And uh, you've been uncovering technologies and implementations of, or applications of uh, infrared that some people never even envisioned, and you've actually been perfecting and actually built a business around. Is that right? That's right. Uh, I, I was in the building industry, and I used infrared thermography to find faults in our own work, the concrete, the insulation, and that kind of thing. I was so intrigued with it, I became partners with the guy that I hired to do the work. Okay. And what were some of the things that you were able to do? I mean, you said faults. What, what do you mean by faults? Well, if you look at any block building, concrete block building, mm -hmm. if you could see it in the infrared, you'll see that there's concrete inside it. It looks like a jail cell. Okay. The way it's uh, designed for structural value. If you look at the insulation value of a building such as this one right here, you, you'll be able to see the faults, the places where the air is leaking out and the places where the heat is leaking out. Okay, so uh, being more energy efficient, if a company or a business went in and used an infrared, uh, infrared camera, they could be able to determine where they're actually losing uh, energy and actually uh, uh, can uncover areas of insulation where they could be able to save some, some energy loss. That's right, although there's nothing remedial about infrared. So you have to want to have the data and you need it. You have to need the data. In other words, if a renter is not paying the utility bills, he would never go to the trouble of having an infrared survey because not only do you have to do the survey, but you also have to do the repair work afterwards. Uh, Greg, uh, share with us how maintenance departments and engineering uh, departments implement or use uh, infrared thermography. Well, as it turns out, everything that breaks fails and dies a death of heat. So if you look at the object, a piece of equipment or a process line with an infrared camera, you can see the failure happening before it actually happens. For example, with electromechanical devices, elect electrical things break by high resistance. And with mechanical devices, it's high friction. So as you can see in this example, uh, this piece of electrical switch gear has a fault on it, and that's a high resistance connection. There's a locked relationship between temperature and resistance. In this example, here's a piece of equipment that is a mechanical device, and it has friction. Excess friction means that it has excess heat. That excess heat can be measured and trended, and you can know before it fails that it's going to fail. In other words, Joel, it's predictive maintenance, not preventive maintenance. Preventive maintenance is tightening every electrical connection, whether it's hot or not, whether it's loose or not. Just on some kind of time-based interval. On a time-based interval, say once a year, I go and I tighten every connection. Well, every connection might not be loose. 
So you look at it with an infrared camera, as in this picture, and you can see the ones that are hot and just tighten those. You know, one of the concerns that we continually bring up on this program is the exodus of the baby boomers and the lack of interest to future generations. Do you think that infrared thermography could be a catalyst in helping enable future generations to pursue this career path? Well, infrared thermography is very graphic, as you can see already. It's immediate. And the younger people like infrared thermography it's not a bunch of numbers or graphs. Some of the other modalities or different predictive technologies are more scientific based. This, where it is rocket science that developed the cameras, when you look at the things, it's not rocket science to figure out what's gone wrong. If I put my hand on my right here and I take it away, it leaves my handprint. Again, I'm delighted to hear that th this will definitely attract or could be a catalyst to uh, enable more uh, uh, younger generations to pursue this career path. Uh, also, can you share with our audience you know, some of the business uh, applications and process improvements that you've seen and witnessed and, and led during your tenure and involvement with infrared? Well, we were talking about maintenance, predictive maintenance, and that modality. Um, actually, there are many, many uses for infrared thermography. As we've talked about with buildings, and you can see the heat loss, um, maybe reduce the fuel usage in the building, uh, make the building not have moisture in it. Uh, in the area of process control, a huge potential exists. If you have 12 lines, production lines, and you can use an infrared camera to repair one of those lines, and make less product return, happier customer, get more, more of the product out on the, into the world in this just-in-time economy we got, then you can fix one line, then you can fix, you're fixing 12. If you have 12 of the same line and you repair one, you can implement those changes across 12 lines. There's millions of dollars savings there. If you got a line that produces a million dollars a month, you'll make $12 million a month more. If you could get it back and up and running or anticipate failure to keep it from breaking down. Well, the failure mode and the maintenance is one item, but I'm speaking of the process itself. If, a lot of processes require energy, heat, you heat up an object, you put it in an oven, and if you look at infrared, if you look with the infrared camera at the object coming out of the oven, even if you can't see it inside the oven, you may be able to see the heat that it's produced outside. And from that, you can tell how to adjust your oven, for instance, or how to use less microwaves or more microwaves in a certain place. This is wonderful. Well, this is definitely a fascinating discussion, and, it, and it's definitely... Uh, covers a lot more material than we have time for in our program. Uh, and I definitely would like to extend an invitation for you to come back and visit so we can get more into depth of some of these issues and opportunities in engineering and, and infrared thermography. Be glad to do it for you, Joel. Have a nice day. Thank you, sir. Uh, today we've got a brief introduction to the, some of the technologies and processes with infrared thermography. Uh, we happen to have an interesting character in uh, Greg Stockton, and, uh, and he's a uh, Again, just a tremendous expert. We will be inviting him back. This is Joel Leonard with Greg Stockton of Stockton Infrared, and you've been watching Skill TV.